warm welcome to all to iap trivandrum this is our fourth day of world breastfeeding week actually we conducted so many programs from starting from the first of uh, first of august itself hello clear read the ആ ഹലോ ബെനറ്റ് സർ ബെനറ്റ് സാറിന്റെ കണക്ഷൻ പോയതാണോ സാറിന്റെ കണക്ഷൻ പോയെന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു റിയാസ് ഡോക്ടർ <laughs> 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 Our own teachers, PMC sir and Shau madam and Ajayar sir for uh, helping us with the, their talk for today and especially from the Gynex side. It is a combined meeting of pediatricians and uh, Gynex college. We are fortunate to have Ajayar sir also with us. To chair all this, uh, we got PMC sir. thank you sir for attending this program and uh, warm welcome to all the participants who are kekunnilla hello hello kekunnundo kekunnilla sir enikku thonnu namaku start cheyayirunnu a few words by narayanan sir narayanan sir rendu vaaku parayyo nattu namukku start cheya sir onnu unmute cheyane sir unmute you sir good evening to you all uh, my teachers pmc sir and shobha ma'am rajayan sir my colleagues in uh, iap thirunadurum and uh, de- dear delegates in the zoom uh, I, i will take only the, i take this opportunity only to congratulate the thirunadurum branch for arranging so many programs in the initial four first four days itself again three more days are left i'm sure and i know that you have arranged programs for the coming three days also so uh, without spending much time i would uh, uh, hand over the mic back to priya thank you sir now let me invite dr riyas to moderate the session and call pmc sir thank you thank you priya uh, uh, i think uh, uh, the team consisting of benetter and uh, priya and uh, praveen needs a, a special mention uh, because uh, uh, the uh, mode of activities the way they um, celebrate the uh, breastfeeding week in the most difficult of the times uh, benetter sir had uh, reached i think uh, around uh, 8000 uh, anganwadi workers uh, with the team of breastfeeding and uh, i think it is there in the uh, youtube for uh, everyone to view also uh, so uh, the tempo uh, is very good and uh, like that other branches are also doing very well especially the calicut branch and uh, uh, cochin and kottayam and all so this is a very uh, good uh, um, breastfeeding week celebration for iap kerala uh, i think dr narayan will be happy because uh, in these difficult times usually breastfeeding week and ors week are very uh, important programs for iap and uh, with all these limitations all the branches are uh, doing very good so with that a uh, uh, few words um, uh, i would like to welcome all of you to today's meeting Uh, today we are very fortunate to have uh, two people uh, who are very uh, enthusiastic in bre- sir 
he was there uh, with the first day program and it was launched in 1992 along with our lc uh, uh, philip madam and quidian uh, thomas sir and um, uh, then we have a uh, show madam uh, who can be very proudly we can present as the mother of neonatology in our state uh, having established a uh, government hospital and uh, have uh, was uh, successful in established so we had ajeshagan sir and uh, uh, show madam as our speakers and to chair the session we are fortunate to have of uh, the uh, on uh, the uh, pioneer uh, neonatologist in the state uh, us over to pmc sir for chairing the session okay. thank you sir kekam varunnundo edakkerege cut aayi povunnundo kekam 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 sir kekam kekam okay okay sir so, good evening everybody let me first of all thank uh, ben and riyas priya and uh, praveen for giving me this opportunity as you know baby friendly hospital initiative started in india at cochin march 1993 and kerala was declared the first baby friendly state in the world in 2002 that's a great achievement and for that we have uh, dr kurian thomas and dr lc philip who are the pioneers in this area and as lc philip madam's assistant uh, i had me as a trivandrum district coordinator gone to all the district hospitals and private hospitals in trivandrum district for to certify the hospital says bfh there's a long back, long back story now to speak to us about the uh, issues in breastfeeding and about the problems of bfh etc we have two stalwarts in the field one is dr shobha she has long years of experience in sat hospital and i'm really happy to uh, say that she is my own uh, what you call me <laughs> they are the best students house surgeon and colleague and dr rajeshagran nayar sir is a senior most obstetrician one of the senior most obstetricians of the state a trainer and a social worker so my connection with him is also in another way that is wife dr girija professor of anesthesia uh, she is my classmate so now the short introduction i hand over to Shoba to speak about the problem she faced in NICU in SAT Hospital. Thank you. Okay, Kamo. Okay, Kamo. Da parne oru. Good evening, everybody. Uh, let me first uh, congratulate uh, and thank uh, Priya, Bennett, Riyas, everybody for uh, celebrating this week so successfully and giving me the opportunity to talk on this. topic this is not a like a scientific uh, uh, or academic uh, lecture this is just the as uh, premc sir said this is the experiences uh, i had in our nicu in establishing it and after that what we are facing and how difficult it is to implement bfha in such a uh, nicu in the public sector so uh, we'll thank uh, thank the organizers again i think i left a benet also hi narayan also and uh, so this slide marnu ingane madam adu onnu touch edittu just onnu touch eda mathi cursor onnu move eda mathi yeah so the challenges in uh, be, uh, be implementing bfha in and this is the topic i have chosen and uh, as you all know this is the uh, nicu in the sat now we have around 30 bedded inborn nursery and 15 bedded outborn nursery and this is the average statistics of the sat hospital the total number of deliveries uh, just i want to uh, point out the multiple pregnancies also triplets and twins how many are there and the pattern you can see that around uh, 35 to 40 percent babies are born before 34 37 weeks of gestation and uh, 33 to 30 below 33 it is again around 5 percent so all these uh, total babies less than 34 will be admitted in our nicu 
and rest as and when needed in the SNCU. So, uh, the first scenario that we see is a preterm baby, 30 weeker baby, SDA, mother having se uh, severe preeclampsia with impending signs and reduced umbilical artery flow, CS done, and mother is in the maternal NICU. The baby has severe respiratory distress, surfactant given, and on bubble CPAP, and started on IV fluids. What happened to the baby? Initial one or two days, we continued on IV fluids. Third day, ordinal uh, feed was started, but mother did not, or the bystanders did not bring any EBM. Fifth day, few drops were brought to the MICU, from the MICU, and the seventh day, what happened? The baby developed abdominal distension and classic picture of NEC, necrotizing enterocolitis. Baby was put on milper oral and IV fluids. Till 12th day, the baby had kept on NPO and we tried to start the uh, breast milk on 12th day of gestation. So what happened the, to the ba baby? baby? When we asked for the mother to come, the mother declared that the mother doesn't have any milk. What to do? So we had to bring the mother to the uh, NICU, counsel the mother and also started on Kangaroo mother care, galactagogues were added, and we could start initiating the lactation only by 15 days of gestation. So, this is the problem that we face. Even if the baby is preterm and NDC, where the breast milk is very um, necessary, it is very difficult to get the breast milk. So, when you admit a preterm baby in the NICU, what are the questions we should ask? What should be the choice of feeds? When to start the feed, what is the route of the administration, how to progress on feeds, whether we can give bolus feeds or continuous feeds, how to assess feed tolerance, fortification of feeds and growth monitoring. So as per WHO, as we know from the best to worst, mother's own milk is the first thing and the last is ordinary formula. In between, we have so many choices, but in the currently we have only the choice of preterm formula the donated fresh milk preterm, donated fresh term milk and pasteurized milk are not available for us. So from the mother's milk, the next choice for us is preterm formula. So what is the advantage of breast milk? All the advantages we know in the term babies, but in the preterm babies also there are so many advantages. Better feed tolerance, low risk of NEC, sepsis, late onset sepsis and even the uh, duration of stay in the hospital. In the, it also prevents retinopathy of prematurity and also later prevents the long-term risk of cardiovascular morbidity. And also it helps the bone health and also the neurological outcomes are better. And also IQ and cognitive function will be better in a preterm baby who is started on breast milk. So this is uh, the picture which depicts the um, various methods how breast milk will influence the growth of the various organs. And as you see, the nutrient requir requirements, the ELBW and very low birth weight babies have a very large They have to have a very large requirement. So what, when to start the feed on a baby with a low birth weight baby with abnormal Doppler, it is very... Uh, well documented that enteral feed should be beginning in the first day of life. We have seen all the animals feeding their offsprings in the day one of life. Only the human beings doubt whether to feed or not. So all enteral feeds should begin in the first day of life. Unless the baby has a bowel ischemia, inotropes on flow, hypotension and anomalies. There is no risk increased when the baby started on express breast milk in the first day of life. So as per our unit policy, we start trophic feeds on day one of life, that is first day itself, unless the baby has other contraindications. What are the benefits of trophic feeds? It improves the levels of gut hormones, less feeding intolerance, earlier progression to full enteral feeding, improved weight gain, and also improves the calcium and phosphorus retention. And so also we can reduce the parental nutrition. So that again, the concept of minimum enteral nutrition in the form of trophic feeds, it is very advantageous for the baby. You can start with 10 to 15 ml per kg 
of abm if available on dates one itself and what are the uh, these uh, situations if it is present though we can start the baby on uh, expressive breast milk because the respiratory distress sepsis glucose disturbances ventilation and umbilical lines even reduced diastolic flow minimal is not a contraindication for starting trophic feeds so it is said that even babies who is having abnormal doppler most of the indication to terminate the pregnancy will be abnormal doppler so only if the baby is less than 29 weeks of gestation and sga it is very you should be very cautious to start the ebm otherwise the baby can be started on trophic feeds even day one of life in spite of the up, uh, abnormal uh, diastolic flow and what is the route of start, starting the uh, feeding it depends upon the maturation skills of the baby feeding skills of the baby so as we know that 28 weeks less than 28 weeks there is no proper sucking efforts and no proper to motility in the gut as the baby matures 28 to 31 weeks the sucking burst develop but the coordination with the breathing will not be there so you have to decide on the feeding route depending upon the maturation skills or the feeding skills of the baby so route of feeding we can choose either the uh, orogastric feeding or it can, as a gravity dependent uh, bolus feed or it can be given as in shown the picture as a uh, infusion very uh, slow infusion through the syringe pump that is known as the slow bolus so as the baby matures baby will start Uh, showing the feeding cues and from 32 to 34 weeks the baby can be put on gogernum feeds and what is important even if the baby is on uh, orogastric feeds colostrum is very important we should make use of the colostrum properties of the colostrum it, there is mucosal absorption of the factors immune factors and it prevents bacterial colonization and it is seen that oral colostrum care can reduce the sepsis it can improve the weight and also reduce the length of the stay in the hospital so always encourage the mothers to bring even drops of colostrum to the nicu so how, what is the way to give the immune therapy you can take the uh, colostrum 0.2 to 0.5 ml in the syringe uh, connect to an adapter and slowly paint over the mouth gum inner buccal mucosa and alveolus of the baby so it will be like a uh, antiseptic which is being applied to the oral mucosa then how to progress progress on the milk you can start the baby on 10 to 20 ml per kg on day if the baby is less than 1200 grams and slowly increase around 20 to 30 ml per kg per day to a maximum of 180 ml in the first week of life and two early feeds in a baby who is less than 1600 and more than 1600 you can go to three hourly feeds then there is a controversy regarding advancement of feeds whether it should be rapid or slow both are equal but there is no added advantage on slow feeding protocols 8 to 10 ml per kg per day because there is no difference obtained seen in the incidence of nec or other other morbidity pattern and whether we have to give a bolus feed or a continuous feed continuous feed means you connect the baby 24 hours to the og tube and give the 24 hours volume as a uh, continuous infusion other thing is bolus means you give the feed through the effect of gravity or adjust the infusion pump to give the amount of milk uh, uh, during 10 to 20 minutes and leave the rest for and a half hours or three so that is known as slow bolus and gravity dependent bolus or you can give continuous feeding because as we know that our human elementary tract is designed for alternate feed and fast cycles it is always better to give a bolus feed and continuous feeds have a disadvantage that it is not physiological and also it is seen that when you give it as a continuous feed it will lo lose its uh, energy content because the fat will get stuck to the plastic sand to the tubings and usually what we hear in the from the mothers is not enough milk is it true, true or not we don't know but uh, we can see that the baby how much it requires from day 1 to day 2 day 3 and all the size of the stomach capacity is depicted in the picture so we have to make use of this picture and always encourage the enhancing factors like sucking expression of the milk 
emptying of the breast and night feeds. So this is a very important picture which we learned from the undergraduate days. And these factors should be encouraged even in mothers who are admitted in the ICU also. So what he has to do, we have to do counseling, counseling, counseling. That is the most important thing. So we have to call the parents, call the husband and tell them what is happening to the baby and also encourage to pump the milk in day one of life, pump the breast milk eight to 12 times a day to have an adequate diet and also to encourage skin to skin contact if the mother is available. And last we can try galactagogues also. So what we do in our unit, we uh, brief the parents, mother, if available, two times a day regarding the medical issues, outcome of the baby and concerns. And during daily rounds in the doctor's chart and in the nurse's records, we uh, record the milk obtained, whether mother is coming to the NICU, giving KMC, giving OG feeds, and whether the baby is on fortification of feeds. And also we have a lactation counselor with us and we hand over the names of the mothers to the lactation counselor and she will go to the ward and uh, counsel the mothers directly also. So these are the things we can do in our setting also. And also in difficult cases, if the resident tells us that the mother is not coming, the senior faculty will counsel the parents' family to uh, encourage the mother to come to the NICU. And what is the role of non-nutritive sucking? It accelerates the maturation of sucking reflex and initiation and maintenance of successful breastfeeding during the hospital stay and after discharge. So there is a decrease in the length of hospital stay if you start practicing non-nutritive sucking. So in the NICU, we practice KMC and after KMC, we use the uh, electrical pump to pump the breast milk from the mother and also it is stored in the container which we keep. The mothers are asked to bring the milk in that container with the label of the mother and also the time they have expressed the milk. And this is a uh, IAP NNF uh, protocol. It has to be that is starting the promotion of breastfeeding in the antenatal period itself regarding the importance of breastfeeding by health talk, display of posters, distribution of booklets and pamphlets, discuss with the pregnant women and family members, obtain a detailed history of breastfeeding in the previous sibling and also nutritional and diet counseling, counseling. And support the mother always. We may not have, we may not know what is their problem. They, we, we may they, she may have occult problems also. So spending some time with the mother will tell you what is the real problem in that mother. And what is fortification of milk? As the uh, time passes, the preterm milk also changes its composition. And by two to three weeks, the protein content will come down. Energy also will come down. So we need some amount of fortification of breast milk as the, in a preterm baby. So otherwise, the baby will go into certain complications like poor radiological, mineraliz radiological bone mineralization, rickets, fractures, etc., hyponatremia, hypoproteinemia, and zinc deficiency. So standard fortification is by adding human milk fortifier to the milk. And for that, you need 20 ml of express breast milk in one gram of sachet. And it has to be continued till the baby is two kilogram. It provides energy, but it cannot provide the adequate amount of protein as the baby needs. So why to start, we have answered when to start, when the baby is on a 100 ml per kg per day feed, you can start the fortifier. And uh, we have only the uh, powder form of uh, human milk fortifier, which is available. It contains one gram sachet, which has to be mixed with 20 ml of breast milk. What are the issues? Cost is a factor. The mother should be taught how to mix the fortifier in the milk, how long to be continued, two kilogram, and also amount of milk available. So if the baby mother uh, expresses only 8 ml, 10 ml, she will may be putting pinches of this fortifier into the gogernum and will give to the baby. That is not allowed. So you have to tell exactly how much amount of milk has to be taken and to be mixed with. The next option is pasteurized donor health, uh, human milk. This is a need of the hour. We have to build up the next uh, uh, trial is to start a human milk, milk, breast milk bank in the hospital. Even if it is less uh, uh, good in calories and protein, uh, that is 43 m, 48 calories per 100 ml and 0.9 gram deciliter of protein, it really uh, reduces the 
incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis compared to preterm formula. And how to assess uh, feed into, uh, tolerance or intolerance. Previously, we have all seen that we put in an OG tube and aspirate the stomach content every two hours. The sister will tell you it is coffee color, green color, yellow color. So now that is now no more practiced in the NICU. And now only checking the abdominal girth is encouraged as a non-invasive method. Even that also is not needed because abdo obvious abdominal distension, tenderness, bilious vomiting, bloody stools or apnea or temperature instability as a diagnosis of NEC is re only required. There is no need to do invasive monitoring or abdominal girth monitoring. And the last option which is available is preterm formula, which has to be given in certain occasions, sticking on to the principle of BFHI. And composition of uh, preterm formula, how to, it differs. It has a greater amount of protein, calcium, zinc, and iron. And also the uh, protein content will be slight 50% greater compared to the term formula. So the challenges in a growing preterm is inadequate weight gain, necrotizing enterocolitis, episodes of feed intolerance, apnea, uh, gastroesophageal reflex, and BPD. So growth monitoring is very important. And the rate of weight gain should be ensured. We would do it all the three parameters like length, head circumference, and weight gain on all Saturdays and every uh, Saturday morning that it is plotted on the growth curve, growth chart. And if the baby is not gaining weight, you have to investigate the baby for what is the problem in feeding the baby. And uh, suppose you are not able to manage one baby, how we are going to manage two babies? This is a 37 year old baby, uh, mother who had four abortions and this is her fifth pregnancy conceived by OM donation and had two weeks PPROM and LCS was done at 34 weeks. So when we see, saw the baby, babies, one, both babies were active but one baby was having less weight. But when the mother was asked to come, she said she's on antihypertensive and can't deprive sleep and not able to come. The mother was very tense after repeated abortions and even we also very, very tense because the mother is having the fifth pregnancy. So the concept that the twin babies need formula is strong in, in her mind and the mother was not willing to come. So what we had to do, we had to bring the mother, uh, adequately counsel her, gave her, given some galactagogues and also asked to come to the uh, nursery as frequently as possible and uh, ensured adequate rest for the baby, for the mother. So in this situation, we have to think of a mother in NICU, whether the mother and the baby can stay together so that these preterm babies can be uh, taken care of much better way. So if with three babies, what we will do, if three babies, there is no other option. This is a uh, triplet born to a primary mother with PPROM of one month, suspected chorioamnionitis. Three, two babies were, were uh, non-invasive ventilation and one baby was on CPAP. Mother could not turn up for five days because she also developed sepsis, started on formula feed, developed intolerance, and also the baby was put on parental nutrition. Mother could come only by uh, day eight and pump her milk. So. We had to put the babies on combination feeds, top feeds plus whatever formula, whatever milk was available through pumping in the nursery also. So this was our condition in 2019 May. We had four sets of triplets and how luckily all of them survived and were discharged healthy after about one and a half to two months. So maternal mortality is another indication where Still, we have a pair of twins with the mother having ovarian malignancy, mother has gone to RCC. So in this case, we can start only with formula feeds. Both babies had NEC treated, still they are in our NICU, 750 grams and 800 gram babies. Because of the proximity to the RCC and uh, Sri Chitra, we get so many cases like this, malignancy and heart disease, whether the pregnancy has to be terminated like this. Not only the little ones, the bigger ones can also give us problems. This is a 38 weeker with uncontrolled diabetes, mother, diabetes mellitus in the mother and the mother was a morbid, morbid obese, 120 kg, it's a real case. Hypertension started on insulin postoperatively. Mother had retracted nipple, abdominal distension of LSES, so she could not even move out of the cot. So the baby was brought with hypoglycemia, 33 milligram sugar, and also the baby had only moderate activity. 
the baby had to be more um, bandaged with formula feeds as a medical indication and syringing was advised for the mother and the DRVS monitoring was done. With great difficulty, we could establish lactation by 72 hours of life. Baby was weaned off and the mother was motivated to feed the baby with the help of the obstetrician and the lactation counselor. Here we have to be a little bit liberal because hypoglycemia can produce brain damage and it has to be avoided at any cost. So this is the maternal comorbid conditions in our uh, hospital. You can see the amount of uh, patients having eclampsia, uh, hypertension and uh, in, uh, diabetes mellitus on medical nutritional therapy, insulin therapy and over diabetes. So these hypoglycemic babies has to be treated medically as an indication with the formula feeds as early as possible and you have to establish lactation also at the earliest. And management of the uh, inverted nipple and all everybody knows. is the NNF IAP uh, pro, uh, protocol and usually we use double syringe method in our NICU and the mothers are comfortable with that also and this is the indication how to, uh, uh, method to show how to express the breast milk and another important group of uh, uh, babies are with upper airway obstruction and upper uh, airway obstructions. This is a cleft palate baby who often come to us with bilateral cleft lip and palate. Mother will be normal and baby is a little bit upset because of the uh, cleft lip. But uh, the baby, in spite of uh, doing the proper position, sitting up position and uh, different hold to the chin, chin pull, the baby is not able to suck from the breast. In that case, we have to try uh, different bottles and also we can try the obturator and finally, sometimes orogastric feed has to be given because uh, the surgeon will not take up the baby unless there is increase in weight gain. In such situation, a mother or the care taker has to be trained regarding the position, avoid aspiration and danger of danger signs. And what we use in the unit is the long teeth uh, bottle, which can be used to give EBM. And this is the upper airway obstruction. So many babies with perirobin anomalies come to us they have uh, what we put is a uh, nasopharyngeal airway, which is a very pl a soft plastic tube, which can be put in the nasopharyngeal airway and it, babies are comfortable with that. And this is the baby after removal of the tube. And uh, term babies also, we have to be cautious in cardiac cases like heart disease, congenital heart block. They can also get uh, necrotizing enterocolitis. GIT abnormalities, the baby had a uh, short bowel syndrome and a near total intestinal resection. Baby had to be on TPN for a long time. And uh, hypoxia, again, there is inadequate, ineffective sucking and there will be poor lactation. So the baby has to be on oral orogastric feeds and also same in uh, metabolic conditions, urea cycle abnormalities, where you have to put the baby on special formulas. Syndromic babies also, there is a problem in establishing feeds. Social issues, very, very common. Family discordance, postpartum depression and all. And another one group which have scraped to us is the Foxos cases. Undigested marriages, mothers less than 17 years. It is very difficult to make them feed. And medically, legally, it is not very safe to um, uh, force these mothers less than 17 years to breastfeed the baby. And outborn babies, mothers in another hospital and baby in, the same, in our hospital also a threat. It's a very great problem for us. And last, not the least, is COVID-19 babies. is a positive mother asymptomatic, who is asymptomatic but mild or symptomatic. And the baby is very preterm or sick. We have to, we have set up a isolation intensive care unit with four ventilators and these babies are treated for respiratory support in this NICU. Express breast milk has to be given theoretically, but I don't know how practical it is with this number of uh, positive cases and establishing a red corridor is needed. And when the positive mother who is moderate or severely symptomatic and the baby is healthy, baby has to be separated in a separate room under the care of a healthy caregiver and express breast milk of the mother, if available, can be given or the baby has to be put on top feeds. And if both are uh, asymptomatic, they can stay together have in the postnatal ward and have 
can be given breastfeeding. So let us utilize the liquid gold which is available for us and we will try to implement BFHA in the great difficult situations also in the NICU also. Thank you. Thank you, Shobha. It's a very, actually a very nice presentation. It's a natural history of SAT hospital and NICU. That is what she had described. Now, hand over to Riaz. Sir, uh, we will uh, take the questions later, sir. Later, uh, yeah. Uh, we will go to Rashair, sir. Stop, sir. Please invite Rashair, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah sir. we can hear. We can hear. Uh, dear Dr. Bennett, Dr. Priya, Dr. PMC Nair, Dr. Riaz, and all the others who are watching this webinar, thank you very much for permitting me to join this program on behalf of the obstetricians. Most of you may know that in 2002, in a function at Ernagulam, the then governor of Kerala, Dr. Um, Sri Sikandar Bhatt, proclaimed Kerala as a baby-friendly state. Dr. L.C. Uh, Philip at that time highlighted that the prevalence of breastfeeding is almost 91% in Kerala. This was a big news at that time, and all the newspapers, India Today, the Hindu, and even the BBC highlighted the um, wonderful achievement of Kerala. But at that time, fortunately, we had some pioneers, Dr. L.C. Philip in Trivandrum, Dr. Kurian Thomas uh, at Kotayam, then Dr. Rajagopan at Calicut. And these, were, these people were spearheading this campaign of PFHI, which was introduced in 1992. And fortunately, we have the second um, a group of person, Dr. M. K. C. Nair, Dr. P. N. C., Dr. Shobha was there, Dr. Elizabeth, Dr. Raja Mohanan, all these people aggressively promoted this and we had wonderful success. And as gynecologists, we could also join the assessment, certification, all these process. But after almost two and a half decades, if you look back, what have we achieved? Now, most of the reports say that the prevalence has plummeted to nearly 40, I mean, 49 or 50 percent. Okay. Why this has happened? Is it our fault? Or is it the fault of the program? Or is it the wrong implementation of a good program? We do not know. However, the blame game continues. The obstetrician blaming the pediatrician and the neonatologist that all these babies are taken away to the, the NICU. So there is um, the breastfeeding is delayed. And the pediatrician. Changes have happened in the field of obstetrics and neonatology over the last two or three decades. One social problem which you may have to think over is the excessive medicalization of this physiological process, medicalization of pregnancy and subsequent commercialization. These are big topics, I'm not going into the details. And these things did have some effects on the neonatal care. But there are other problem, for example, the development of the high risk obstetrics in Kerala is a new entity. That is, 30 to 40 percent of the maternity cases now belong to this particularly high risk group. Many of these babies directly go to NICU with problems, but there is a small subset, even for the transient tachypnea. which is maybe which we could prevent to a certain extent. Okay. Because that is all part of a defensive practice from some of the practitioners. 
And another very important thing is the escalation of cesarean section. You may note that during the 90s, it was hardly 10%. Now, almost 40 to 50% of all deliveries are happening by abdominal growth, cesarean section. And there is no uniformity in care of these women and breast, breastfeeding policies across hospitals. We try to implement that all these babies should be breastfed in the theater itself then before transfer to the uh, ward or the whatever places, intensive care or whatever places it is intended for. But it is not uh, like that in many of these hospitals. So that is one um, hindrance which we have noticed. Then another thing is the lowering of the period of viability. For example, while we were doing the post that that is way back in 70, 70s, and even in 80s, we find that we don't dare to deliver a baby below 32 weeks. Now that is past history. Now, whether we should deliver at 28 weeks, 26, even 24 weeks, if there is a maternal problem. So that is a state of affairs. So naturally, all these babies will land up in NICU. So ideally, how do you calculate the breastfeeding feeding rates? Because if you analyze total number of deliveries and compare it with the number of uh, uh, babies who had initiation, then it will be diluted. So actually, you like to exclude all these high-risk group who are not fit for the oral fees. Then you should calculate. It may be around 70-80% more most of these institutions. So there is a fallacy in the calculation itself. Then to address some of these issues, I think we'll have to identify problems. And then individual institutions, individual institutions should identify ways and means so that all these can be addressed. Then is there any need for our change in our strategy? For example, currently we address from the antenatal period itself. But personally, I feel that we should start a little earlier even from the, the childhood, even from the school years, the advantages of breastfeeding and all those things should be highlighted with small videos and all those things. Okay, so this, uh, this habit, I mean, these advantages of breastfeeding should be inculcated to them much earlier. Don't wait for the antenatal period. So ideally, the children, especially the adolescents are receptive. That is one thing. Okay, so there should be a shift in our policy. I mean, Usually we talk of the menstrual abnormalities and all those things for the adolescents. But I think it is time for us to change that policy and start talking to them about the breastfeeding also. Okay. Then uh, over the years we find that, I mean, that's a cultural thing. That is, there is a stigma associated with breast and breastfeeding. Okay. Breast is considered as a sex, sexual organ and uh, people are not, um, they are reluctant to feed, uh, do a breastfeeding in public. Suppose you go for rounds, the moment you enter the room, if the mother is breastfeeding, immediately she remove, she remove the baby, try to cover it up. Okay, so there has been a stigma. I think somehow we'll have to overcome this stigma. Okay, so again, um, the, even if you even if you look at the breastfeeding corners, I think it is just like fortresses. A lot of women coverage, security, and all those things. I think it can be even a public affair. Breastfeeding, you uh, go to one corner and breastfeed the baby. I think you need not identify such um, high security places like the breastfeeding corners. Okay, so this I think the sensitization should happen much earlier and there must be more social involvement. And one of the fundamental mistakes I feel is that um, uh, this problem should be passed on to the, to the social realm. So this, we try to medicalize breastfeeding, etc. I think it should be transferred to the social realm for much more effective functioning. Because it is, I think most of these can be practiced very easily by the, the social groups. So I think uh, it is high time that we should um, think over these policies. Okay. So these are some of the thoughts, random thoughts, uh, which come to my mind, looking at the BFHA program, which was 
in, in, in uh, introduced way back in 1992 when I was working at Kota. Then I moved on to Calicut. I worked with Dr. Rajagopal. He's a very ardent enthusiast. But somehow, I think there is a little laxity now. Okay. Anyway, thank you all uh, for listening to me. And maybe you can give some thought on these points which, which have been highlighted. Thank you very much. Over to you, Riaz. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, uh, Shaw Madam and Dad Sharon Sir had uh, uh, given us very clear messages. Uh, Madam had told us that uh, a tiny baby can be breastfed because uh, it is a taboo that in the NICU, the sickest of the baby uh, should not be given breast milk. So that taboo is broken. So you can um, uh, feed the tiniest and the sickest of the babies. We have to make a um, informed decision, which is a knowledgeable decision, that is all. And uh, when Madam is telling all this, we should also remember it is not very easy to establish relaxation at 8 days and 15 days. There is a tremendous effort behind that. So there should be a team and there should be a protocol for making this possible. And from Rajeshagran sir, the most important lesson we had learned is that the stigma regarding breastfeeding, which is still existing in our community, so this is something all of us has to take up and the idea of um, teaching adolescents about breastfeeding in schools that is something wonderful i think we should uh, we should take it to our heart and we should start doing that because the stigma it should be removed then only breastfeeding can happen in public places in buses in trains and all those things that is very very important over to you pmc sir for your comments Okay, can I open the slideshow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Can anyone identify this place? This is Ankara, capital city of Turkey, where the first landmark planning for BFHS took up in 1991. Okay, so um, breast milk is the best milk for the baby, all of us know. No confusion, no doubts about it. As um, Rajivan uh, sir said, the National Survey NFHS 2015 system, that is the last I think, shows that 42% of children under age three years are breastfed within one hour of birth, only 42%. And only 55% exclusively breastfed till six months of age. So looking back, when we had toil those days for so much of these things and why BFJ is not becoming 100% successful. So the problems uh, will be on breastfeeding. I think breastfeeding for a primary mother is not at all easy, no, because there are problems in latching, positioning, sore nipple, exhaustion, ignorance, confusion, not enough milk. Then the biggest problem will be husband, grandmother, relatives, continuously scolding her and of course the story of milk substitutes. So with this, I want to look in some of the random thoughts I have after conclusion of, of both these speakers. First, I think the most important thing is colostrum because of course it is the baby's first vaccine. We should not forget that. And another important physiological aspect of it is the first one to two days, you get only 50 to 100 ml on the, uh, uh, only BFHA has to so come out and teach this aspect because if you look at the lactogenesis stage two, milk production starts 30 to 40 hours after birth. High um, copious milk secretion because of high prolactin levels and increased breast fullness and milk coming down only by five, two to eight days only. So first 24 hours, that is the most difficult part. I've seen um, teen number of mothers come and the grandmothers come and tell us, Dr. Uru Nul, what to explain to them and how to explain and that is the easiest situation to write a formula and once you write a formula they will carry on with them for the next five or ten years saying that this doctor prescribed formula fits so it's very important that the first two days is the most difficult period you get only 50 to 100 ml but that is enough for the baby you know, enough to meet the metabolic demands of the baby, only 50 to 100 ml. So this point has to be taught by the uh, BFHA team. 
Second and the most important point is family support, especially for the primary and preterm mothers lactation assistance and this also the pfha people or the team have to come around and actively do it both my daughter as well as um, daughter la both face the problem the first one to do this i think 99 percent of the primary mothers are facing this problem the first one to two days how to feed the baby and they easily fall for milk substitutes which are quite away freely available so a lactating primary mother needs skilled support the role of a lactation counselor in uh, PGI Chandigarh, we had the, that is in 1990s, we had the lactation counselor, we used to call them breastfeeding ladies. They used to come to all the rooms, sit with the mother and convert them into a strong follower of breastfeeding. So unless you don't have that uh, thing, I'm sure the BFHA will not be a big success because mother requires privacy, reassurance, confidence, pain relief, and in the USA also I've seen, though they are very bad in breastfeeding things, but um, the counselor or the lactation counselor comes to the room, sits with the mother and converts a situation of sadness into ecstasy. They're very good in dealing and telling you and making you confident. So partial support invariably needed the first one to do that. That is another important point I have learned over the years. Then of course, the problem in latching and positioning. That is the main complaint, 99% of the primary gravita mothers say how to latch the baby position, they will be struggling, baby will not be getting the milk and baby will stop uh, trying to latch. So first few days, especially primary or a preterm baby's mother definitely have to be held, family support and lactation counseling. Without that, no program is going to succeed. Then this is the beautiful, uh, what it's called, lack score. And uh, this, I think this should be uh, made in the chart and put in most of the maternity wards. Some hospitals they are doing. It's very useful. And because the mother herself can do the self questionnaire technique and score, and the score is less than seven, means assistance and monitoring required. Then, so the proper attachment, this is all of us know this, but again, stretching the point that good attachment is very important. More areola should be visible above than below and lips should lower lips should be averted uh, another important point which we are forgetting is positioning the baby proper position should satisfy all the four criteria and i still remember um um Korean Thomas are telling us and his uh, what is that i can still hear the um, his voice in my ears like chest to chest tummy to tummy chin to breast so how many people are concentrating on positioning the baby? This is also very important for a proper feeling. This is good attachment. We all know this. This is definitely poor attachment. And here, see the baby is doing good latching. The lower lips are what a little bit of areola only seen on the upper margin. And this is very poor attachment and various common feeding positions. I won't need with that. Now the causes of poor attachment mainly goes to feeding bottles, use of feeding bottles, inexperienced mother, lack of skill support. This is one of the important points in BFHA 9 point in, the, in this, this bottle states and pacifies no. And uh, so bottle definitely no, it causes nipple confusion. And this is a classically, uh, baby was been sucking the bottle, this is what he'll be doing. And the mother and dad have sore nipples. Then another big problem, every mother comes to us with saying that she doesn't have enough milk. Many mothers come to the OP, and then there's no, and the grandmothers and the husband also will be supported, not a little drop of milk is coming. This may be because of you know, so many things like pain, worries, will lead to poor oxytocin reflex, then poor sucking. Again, because well, the baby suckles only, uh, prolactin is released, then only milk secretion will come. So identify the problem when she comes, saying that not enough milk, we have to identify the problems, send, spend some time with her. And if you notice the weight gain of the baby is normal and baby is doing well, reassure and counsel her, but it will be very difficult. And a lot of problems can be in the mother, in the baby. I am not going to detail because um, Shoba had described some of them. But the main problem is lack of confidence or the sort psychosocial problems. These are the various problems definitely Shoba had shown. And another important fifth point I would say is promote night fees. Most of the time, 
അവര് അമ്മമാര് റെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യട്ടെ ഇത്രയും നേരം കഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട് തന്നെ ഉറങ്ങട്ടെ എന്ന് പറയും പക്ഷെ നൈറ്റ് ഫീസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഫോർ ദി പ്രൊലാക്ട് ഇൻ റിലീസ് പ്രൊലാക്ട് ഇൻ അറ്റ് ദി സെയിം ടൈം വി ഷുഡ് നോ ഇസ് എ റിലാക്സിങ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് പ്രൊമോട്ട് സ്ലീപ് സോ ദ മദർ വിൽ നോട്ട് ഗെറ്റ് ടയർഡ് ടു ഷേപ്പ് ഗീവ് ദി നൈറ്റ് ഫീസ് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് പോയിന്റ് മോർ പ്രൊലാക്ട് ഇൻ സെക്രീറ്റ് അറ്റ് നൈറ്റ് സോ ദ മദർ ഷുഡ് നെവർ ലീവ് നൈറ്റ് ഫീലിംഗ് ദൻ ഓക്സിറ്റോസിൻ ഇസ് എ peculiar and this thing is that it is affected by the pain emotional upset of the mother so at this time if she receives support help to feel comfortable and then allow the baby to continue the feeding milk to flow again because this is one situation where she may stop the feeding and this is the beautiful slide show and thing uh, oxytocin can have a effect just thinking loudly allowingly of the baby sound of the baby sight of the baby all this will cause the milk let down to flesh from the posterior pituitary at the same time worry stress pain and doubt can hinder the reflexes so this is the main situation we have seen women with cracked nipples sore nipples mastitis they complain a high stress level and majority with best problems increase cycling and stress give up feeding and what they say is insufficient milk allenge raatri maatram pashuvam paalo allengile formula kodukunu nu parayunu and that will lead to all complications so the important point is you should provide a peaceful atmosphere just marapalu kodukku nu paranjittu poya maatram pore we should arrange a peaceful atmosphere calm area rest for the mother plenty of fluids and also back massage is also very useful then this i have found in the usa now it is available here also nursing pillow or positioner you can keep the baby on that and so it be convenient for the mother to hold the baby on the lap then other issues like um, uh, shoba had shown this inverted flat or retract in nipples i don't know um, uh, sharon will explain so many mothers now almost 50% of the mothers are coming with flat retracted nipple or inverted nipple etc and another thing i learned from an obstetrician is that you this physical preparation for breastfeeding and uh, that pulling the nipple out and out should start only late in the third trimester because it can cause release of oxytocin which can lead to preterm labor so manually uh, stretch out or ro- roll out the nipple that is pulling out the nipple and then inverted nipple the correction we know immediately after delivery the press pump and she uh, shoba showed about this double series technique etc so i not hold on to this this breast pumps are very useful especially for the newer generation mothers lactation assist devices um, this uh, manual breast pump is available electric breast pump is available and also we have the um, hospital by battery powered breast pump which is very not very expensive very useful in the first one or two days and once this stimulates the milk production then the milk will flow just like that so it is a very useful contraption if uh, it can be used then we have small other things like nipple puller breast cups then which all bring out our inverted or retracted nipples also a method of expressing the breast milk which may be needed in working mothers preterm sick baby sick mother and local breast problems and we know how long it can be kept in today's quiz also we had this question on how long you can keep the milk in room temperature refrigerator and freezer then sore nipples are the big problem incorrect attachment the commonest cause is incorrect attachment nipples are king it is very common in the mothers and so much a pain it causes so that you cannot tell the mother to feed the baby so frequent use of soap and water fungal infections all this can be a problem nipple shield can be used provided you are careful don't drop it on the ground because nnf doesn't recommend nipple shield in the indian situation because people put it down then take it up and cause infection otherwise it is useful especially in this situation then this is if a mastitis in the mother and breast engorgement mastitis etc you know how to deal with that then do we have a role for galactogogs shoba uh, shoba described the use of galactogogs in certain situations we uh, domperidone can be used only when support another mothers fail and uh, the reason one reason is if you look in the physiology there is something called delayed lactogenesis 2 which can occur with hypothyroidism premature delivery or cesarean delivery so it is very common isn't it so this situation sometimes we may have to resort to this thing but when gogolam medical college we have been using the sadavari 
um, powder that comes as lactonic granules or lactate tablets, which is very useful. In, in olden situations in Kerala, where all these, the mothers are getting this, Shadavadi, then Dramste, Fenugru, these are all in the mother's diet during lactation. Then preterm low birth weight baby again Shoba showed the various problems we face. Actually, beautifully showed the natural history how the baby improves from uh, IV fluids to two feeds to Gogarnam feeds. This mother in XIT hospital long drawn back out is 1979 or something 700 grammar and we had so many problems. Mother first ran away looking at the small baby. She was just 18 years old. Now this child has grown up the big uh, girl and doing some postgraduate degrees. And the KMC is also very important in this sort of maybe situation. So the main key is to idea is to you remove more milk from the breast and do this quickly and frequently so that less milk accumulates in the breast phase. And um, so what you can do is empty the breast as thoroughly as possible each nursing or pumping session. Fill is what is called as a feedback inhibition inhibitor of lactation. There's a factor in the breast milk. So only if the milk is um, um, emptied from the breast, this will stimulate further production and the prolactin reflux and all will come only if the breast is emptied. So that is the most important thing. If the mother goes to bottle feeding, then breast milk will automatically stop. So the key to best breastfeeding practice is to continue daily, day-to-day -day support for breastfeeding mother within our home and community without which the program will never become successful. Skill support, especially in the first few days. Once lactation is established, then it's not going to be a problem. So thank you very much. Another important aspect is uh, working mothers. That is a burning issue, isn't it? Because that, uh, I'm sure there will be questions on this and whatever I say will not be complete also. But breastfeeding friendly workplace, where should have a room to feed and all the facilities also there. This also in USA, whatever bad we tell about them, and they are given a lot of importance for these small things, so-called small things. Every place there is a uh, room or a place to feed the baby. There's a, there is a place even in the, in the toilet to change the nappies for the baby on a table. So feeding areas and public places coming up nicely and I was very happy when I went to Guruvayur temple seeing a breastfeeding or molecular room near the uh, temple, inside the temple campus. So it is a very interesting and nice way to know that things are improving. Feeding areas and public places. That's very important. So let us support moms to breastfeed anytime, anywhere. We can all help to make it uh, Breast friendly, friendly, make the society involved in it. And as the Sharon Sar was saying, the bra or, um, uh, breast milk banking. And we have a session on uh, milk banking by Dr. Kumada, I think on Friday evening in the NNF uh, breastfeeding celebrations. So I invite everybody to attend that. And also, as uh, again, as Sharon Sar and Shopa said, Early education for children, or starting with the adolescent period and breastfeeding is very important. So that will definitely remove most of the doubts for these people. So the theme this year is support breastfeeding for a healthier planet. Thank you very much. And thank you, Riaz. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I invite, uh, I think uh, Elizabeth Madam is here. Madam, your comments, Madam. A breastfeeding meeting cannot Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 madam. Thank you so much, Dr. Riyas. I am I was so excited to see this program. The uh, neonatologists, the pediatricians, and the gynecologists coming together on one platform. That is the need of the hour. I think uh, all the speakers have highlighted beautifully uh, the issues and the challenges and how to overcome. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, Chandram IAP is taking all this lead and I thank Dr. Bennett and the, Dr. Priya, Dr. Praveen, the whole team. Uh, actually, uh, we should uh, give the theme that uh, uh, breast milk is for brain growth, breast milk is for body growth, breast milk is for emotional growth, well-being. So, as Rajshivirin sir was telling, um, the social domain should take it up. 
and uh, previously in one uh, session in SAP hospital, I think it is Elsie Bilu Madam who said that if you tell the mother that 10 IQ points will increase and her child will be eligible for medical school admission, all mothers will take the sacrifice. Some years back, Madam was telling. So that social domain, I think the mother's absolute uh, affection, the MA program, which has to handhold with the BFHI. The baby is in the hospital only for two days or five days. And what is the what can the hospital do? We can only sensitize them and initiate. But it is a long run, marathon run, run she has to go for at least thousand days uh, that during that thousand days period. So we should have a support from the uh, social domain as sir has uh, rightly pointed out. And uh, thank you all the pioneers, Mother Indran's uh, session was also very good. Shobha has explained it beautifully well. I am so happy. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, I would like to hear also from uh, Indumadi Madam. Indumadi Madam was uh, one who had uh, made breastfeeding to the social front by organizing a, a large, uh, uh, what you call a walkathon while she was the uh, uh, president of IAP Trivandrum. Madam is here. Indumadi Madam, please. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, Diaz. Uh, one second. Uh, some, some phone is coming. I'll go away from it. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much, Riaz. I think uh, we had a very wonderful session today. Shobha Madam and PM Sir and Rajan's Rajan are always bringing up the practical points. And uh, really, this very useful points he brings up. And we try to match up to the requirements of BFHA in, all, in our hospital especially. But of course, we're also finding it difficult. And I feel every year we have to keep on reminding ourselves a commitment to breastfeeding, which has to come reinforce this with all the students who are in especially colleges and our uh, mothers. And so I think uh, we have done well. Uh, I think, yeah, one of our marathon was really successful. I think it went off with the health minister was very happy with that. I have very fond mom, uh, mom memories of that marathon, all of us together. It brought a big thing to IAP also. So I am also grateful for joining hands with this uh, movement. And uh, thanks to Raj Mohan sir and all these who actually trained these lactation counselors. I find them very useful in our hospital. And uh, I think the students also should take up, the pediatrics, PGs, all of them should take up this as a challenge. It is quite interesting. I have also evolved, seen this evolving through the years, when, especially with working with Elsa Pishpandam. And I've gained much from her. And uh, I think it's uh, gaining momentum. We hope it, we will reach the target soon. That is my hope and yes. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, there is one question, uh, Shava, madam, about uh, breast shield. Uh, how to use a breast shield? Uh, breast shield, as the BMC sir said, it is not very hygienic to use it. Actually, it is equivalent to giving bottle feeds. Unless the mother uh, sterilizes it each time and uh, using it, it's very... Uh, troublesome to explain. So usually we don't practice it in our unit, red seal. But uh, this uh, double syringe method is as good as this. The mother can pull out the nipple and then once it comes out, you can feed. Thank you, madam. Uh, now I invite uh, uh, Dr. Priya to uh, tell us about, uh, uh, because uh, Indumadi madam was telling about the lactation counselors. So, uh, but Ashair sir, Shaw madam, Indumadi madam, all were uh, involved in training all these uh, lactation counselors. So Priya was having an idea of uh, getting them together and uh, having a, um, um, what they call a discussion or a class. So can you share what is happening or Priya? Thank you, uh, Riaz. Actually, my plan was to uh, get all the lactation counselors uh, together and uh, have a meeting. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, these lactation counselors were the first batch of Kuhas in 2019. And uh, IAP Kerala had a great role in uh, uh, starting from the beginning itself uh, till the certificate distribution. But in uh, some of these, uh, some uh, districts, the certificate distributions uh, didn't happen. And uh, uh, we, uh, in Trivandrum, uh, we could do it. We uh, gave the certificate distribution and all, and 40 lactation counselors are there in uh, to, uh, to in that batch. 
and uh, so that is our plan and on 6 uh, august at 3 pm we are planning a lactation counselors meeting and uh, uh, rajmohan sir is with us and uh, uh, he is giving all the help from uh, kufas and uh, getting all these uh, people together that is uh, it's almost 500 to 700 lactation counselors has been trained so uh, that is in different districts and getting them all together is actually a herculean task but iip kerala and iip trivandrum is trying for that and uh, kindly attend that meeting and that meeting will be inaugurated by our uh, honorable vice chancellor mohan sir who has and i think uh, priya the uh, hospital deliveries if we have lactation counselors definitely it will improve the uh, initiation not only initiation but continuation of exclusive yes. breastfeeding is going yes. to definitely help aashana samaya priya ne covid covid mothers Uh, any new concepts coming out for yes chova uh, madam actually answered that question yeah. before no uh, she answered anything more then, no even if she is positive the baby can be kept with the mother that is a new concept isn't it yes yes, yes. newer concept yes sir. because some of the babies are not getting then again not getting infection as a serious infection if the breast milk is given the antibodies will be transferred and no. will be either, either asymptomatic or mild infection yeah the antibodies are formed very fast i think yeah so over to priya for closing uh my sincere thanks to rajeshagran sir our guest of the day uh, who spent his valuable time with us and uh, he, uh, and for raising certain important issues especially some social issues regarding uh, bfhi implementation and uh, my special thanks to pmc sir for chairing the session and uh, sharing his 10 points regarding uh, uh, breastfeeding initiation and continuation and let me thank shobha madam for sharing not only her experience but her uh, efforts and her hard work uh, in the nicu with us uh, i thank moderator riyas uh, i thank narayanan sir and bala sir for uh, spending their valuable time with us i should thank elizabeth madam and indumathi madam also for sharing their thoughts and uh, uh, let me thank all the delegates uh, both from the pediatric side uh, and the uh, ong colleagues and i could see uh, a few uh, from the nursing faculty as well uh, so and neonatologists who spent their valuable evening with us uh, thank you all okay, okay thank perfect. you let me close thank the you. session thank you sir thank you thank, thank you everybody thank you thank you. thank you let me close the session thank you